Hi, it's Nero here from Investment Rise, and today I want to talk about loan mortgage insurance, or LMI for short. Is it just a scam to help banks make more money, or could it be the thing that actually helps you build a property portfolio faster? So today I'm going to look at a number of different scenarios uh, because I don't know your exact situation. So again, please don't take anything that I say as advice, okay? You want to go and get your own personal advice. This is just general information, but my aim here is to help you understand what questions to ask to then work out if LMI is something you should use as part of your investing journey. Okay, now this is in response to an episode I did a few weeks ago where I explained how equity works and how to use equity to build your property portfolio. And the most common comment I received in response to that episode was, Nero, can you do an episode on LMI? So for all of those who asked, this is that episode. Okay, now first of all, what exactly is LMI or loan mortgage insurance and how does it work? All right, so LMI is It's an insurance premium that you pay for if you're looking to take out a loan that's greater than 80%. So the moment you're looking at a loan that's 80.01% of the purchase price or higher, okay, then the bank will charge you an LMI or loan mortgage insurance premium, okay? Now, although you pay that insurance premium, that insurance gives you zero protection, okay? It protects the bank but the bank passes that cost on to you, okay? So therefore, if you're borrowing 85% or or 90%, which is generally the most, I mean, there are a couple of lenders there who'll give you maybe 95%, but let's say on average, most lenders will give you 90%, okay? And so if you're borrowing 90% of the purchase price of your own home or investment property, then the loan is insured, so the bank gets insurance on that loan, and you are paying for that that premium, okay? Now, some banks, mind you, will also insure their loans even if it's below 80%. The difference is then they pay for the premium, they don't pass that premium on to you, okay? So that's what loan mortgage insurance is. Again, it's a premium that you pay for if you're looking to borrow more than 80%, but it gives you no protection, it protects the bank. So immediately then it looks like, well, Why would you pay for that, right? Why would you pay for something that gives you no protection, it's only protecting the bank in case you default, all right? Well, yes, that is exactly how it sounds, but let's have a look at now, well, especially from an investment perspective, if you're looking to buy an investment property, is loan mortgage insurance worth looking at, all right? And let's look at a few scenarios. Scenario number one, okay? Let's say, for example, you're looking to buy an investment property, okay? Let's say purchase price is $500,000, okay? So $500,000. Now, now say you have in savings, you have savings of $70,000, okay, 70K. Now, <clears throat> if you wanted to borrow 80% on this property, okay, so that you didn't have, didn't have to pay low mortgage insurance, you would then have to take out a loan of 80% to $500,000, which is $400,000, and then you'd have to come up with a 20% deposit, which is 100 grand. Now, for all of these scenarios, I'm just gonna ignore stamp duty here, okay? So please understand that all the figures are exclusive of stamp duty, so you'll have to add that on top as an investor, okay? But I think it's just gonna keep things a lot more simple when we're trying to work out is LMI worth doing or not, okay? So in this scenario, if you're borrowing 80%, you need to come up with 100 grand, 20% deposit, okay? Plus, you know, additional costs. Now, you've only got 70K, okay? So what do you do? Well, option number one is you decide, well, look, I don't wanna pay LMI, I am simply gonna keep saving and wait till I get to that 100 grand, okay, plus damn duty, et cetera, before I can afford this property. That's fine. The question you need to ask though is, how quickly can you come up with the extra money so that you only need to borrow 80%, okay? Now, if you're lucky enough that you've maybe got money from other sources coming in or you're on a really high income and you can do it pretty quickly, then okay. But for most people, going from say 70K in in the bank, and remember this is money that you're earning, paying tax on, uh, paying for all your living expenses, only what, and then what's left, okay? So that's what you have available to you to add to your savings. To go from 70K to 100K is gonna take 
quite some time, okay? At least a few months, if not even a couple of years in, in some people's cases, okay? Because if you think about it, even if you save on average $1,000 a, a month, okay? Well, that's $1,000 a month times 12, that's $12,000, okay? So if you're saving $12,000 a year, to go from 70 to 100 is gonna take you two and a half to three years, okay, right? And then the question though is, what have you missed out on by waiting that long? Because this $500,000 property, what if it's gone up even more than that, right? That's the question to, to ask, okay? Now, backtrack a bit and let's just, bit, let's just say, okay, you're gonna decide to look at LMI, loan mortgage insurance. How would that work? All right, so of your savings, okay, your 10% deposit is going to be $50,000. So let's go deposit is $50,000, okay? and then your loan mortgage insurance premium. Now, again, this will differ depending on maybe different lenders and different situations, okay? So my general rule of thumb that I've uh, applied for the last 20 years that I've been investing in property is to simply assume 2%. So I just go, what is the purchase price? And if I'm borrowing, say, 90% of the purchase price, or that's my intention, I work out that loan mortgage insurance, I do my figures as if it's gonna be 2% of the purchase price, okay? So 2% to $500,000 is $10,000. So my LMI is gonna be 10K. Okay, so therefore I've got 60K. All right, and now I can get into this, this, this property. Okay, but then you know, the immediate thought is, yeah, but you've just paid 10 grand. What are you gonna get for that 10 grand? Well, think about this. You're now into this property, okay? This property needs to rise by 10K for you to get your low mortgage insurance premium back, okay? So it has to go from 500,000 to $510,000, okay? And then the money you've paid, the, the LMI component, the property has gone up by exactly the same amount to offset that, okay? Now, $10,000 out of $500,000 is what? 2%. How long do you think it will take this property to rise by 2%? Now, here's the thing. If you don't believe that this property is gonna rise by at least 2% pretty quickly, it doesn't matter whether you're borrowing 80% or 90%, whether you're using LMI or whether you're not, you should not be buying this property, right? Plain and simple. If it, you don't think it's gonna rise at least 2%, you should not be buying this property, all right? Because you're doing it from an investment perspective. However, if you're confident in the capital growth fundamentals of, of the area, then you wanna think about maybe jumping in as soon as possible, especially if in today's environment where rents are so strong. And so you might be able to look at the month to month cash flow and go, well, you're either positive, neutral, maybe slightly negative. And so it's affordable for you, okay? Because the question you need to ask yourself is, what's gonna happen faster? Are you gonna be able to save to go from 70K here to 100K faster? Then this property will rise in value, okay? And regardless of any temporary wobbles we might have in the property market, if you look at 10 year average growth rates, right? For most people, property growth rates are much higher than people's ability to save. All right, so this property, so it may, let's just say it only rises by 5% a year, okay? So that means it's, what's 5% of $500,000 is $25,000. So in 12 months time, this has gone up to 525. In two years time, it's say 550 plus. In three years time, it's probably sitting about $580,000, okay? Now, if you decide you're gonna wait three years to go from 70K to 100K, all right? Yes, you might have done that, but then you're buying a property that's now risen in value in three years time to be $580,000, okay? So you have saved $30,000. So you've gone from 70 to $100,000, okay? Assuming that's your savings rate of roughly a thousand bucks a month, okay? You've saved 30 grand in three years, but the property's gone up 80 grand. You're actually behind. On the flip side, if you were the person who said, no, I'm gonna get in as soon as I possibly can, and you used LMI, okay? So yes, you paid 10K here, but you got into the property at $500,000, that $80,000 capital growth that you made while someone else was waiting, well, you just made $80,000, okay? Okay, less the 10K, shall we say, for the LMI, you're still $70,000 ahead, okay? That's the 
thing to understand is when you're investing in property, LMI should essentially just be, okay, it's an annoying but practical cost of doing business, okay? Because by paying that LMI, you're getting into the property market faster, right? And if that's affordable for you, if the cash flow on a 90% loan is affordable for you, then you need to ask yourself, why are you not paying loan mortgage insurance? Why are you not getting into the property market faster? Okay, just imagine if this was your scenario at the start of 2021, okay? And pick almost any, any market, right? Okay, and you decide you were going to wait, right? You'd be further behind today because property prices aren't fixed. Over the long term, in good areas, property prices have always been known to, to rise in value, all right? And so by waiting, what often happens for most people is that they end up missing out on, on opportunities that they could have got into more, uh, more quickly. All right. So if you're someone who wants to build a property portfolio more uh, quickly and LMI is something that you're trying to grapple with, okay, I can tell you personally, I may not say all, but I'd have to say the vast, vast majority of all my properties, I've gone in at 90%. Okay. So 90% loan, um, uh, I've paid the loan mortgage insurance premium, I've got in fa uh, faster and that's always worked out so much better um, for, for me. All right. So you need to to decide if that's right for, for you, okay? So scenario number one is that by using loan mortgage insurance premium, it allows you to get into the property market for less cash investment or less equity uh, than if you were waiting to get in with an 80% loan. Now, let's have a look at scenario number two. And as you can see by the magic of video editing, I've got a slightly different scenario here, all right? So let's say now you're in a scenario where you have savings or available equity of say $120,000, okay? So that is your limiting factor, but you have the borrowing capacity to for a, for a million dollars, okay? So therefore, your borrowing capacity isn't the issue, it's how much you have for the initial deposit, okay? So the question then for, you, for yourself is to go, well, if you've got $120,000, okay, you could easily use that as your 20% deposit to buy one $500,000 property, right? Because 20% of $500,000 is, is $100,000, okay? So you would have enough for, for one property, no problems. But you've got the borrowing capacity to buy two, all right? And so this is where it comes down to then your goals and your time frames. I mean, how quickly are you looking to build a property portfolio, okay? Are you someone who wants to do it a little bit more, more slowly? You're more risk, risk, risk averse. Uh, and so you might buy one, that's fine, okay? But if you're someone who says, well, look, I believe I can easily afford two, two properties. The cash flow profiles are, are good. I want to get ahead faster. I don't want to miss out on, on capital growth. I want to get to my end goals faster, either because you have less time until retirement or you just want to do things in as efficient a manner as, as possible, okay? So then you might look at two properties. But in this scenario, if you're going to have buy two properties, because you've still only got $120,000 in either available equity or, or savings, you would then use loan mortgage insurance, okay? So what would happen is you would have a 10% deposit on each one, so 50K again is deposit, and then your LMI will be 10K, oops, 10K, okay? So in total, you'll have 60K for one property, and because you've got savings or available equity of $120,000, you'd have another 60K, okay, for property number two. Now again, obviously I've taken stamp duty out, so you need to have a bit extra here for stamp duty, but hopefully you understand the, the, the concept here, okay, is that LMI is, a, is, yes, it's a cost, and the question you need to ask yourself is, well, what's the gain for you, all right? And the answer really depends on you and your personal situation and what you're trying to to, to achieve, okay? If you're trying to do this faster and this is, and your savings or equity limitation, okay? Well, then you may consider using LMI to, to build that portfolio faster, at least initially, all right? So I have a client who used LMI to get into their first property, okay? That's what they did. They only had $60,000, okay? They got into a property priced at $450,000, okay? Now that property has risen significantly. It's worth about $650,000 right now, okay? They've tapped into the equity, but for property number two, um, because they're starting to reach their borrowing capacity constraints right now, they're deciding not to use LMI and they're using a 20% deposit uh, and then borrowing 80%, okay? So you can keep changing this, all right? The things to consider are goal, your goals, your constraints in terms of savings, savings and equity, and also your, um, 
your borrowing capacity, okay? Because on, on, on the flip side here, all right, if, for example, you had $120,000 in savings or equity, but you only had the borrowing capacity for one property at $500,000, okay? Well, then you may not worry about LMI. You may just say, I've got the equity savings, I'll put into this property, avoid paying loan mortgage insurance, and just get that one property, okay? So you need to understand all the factors to look at here. So that is scenario two, where again, your constraints are savings and, and your equity, okay? Scenario number three is probably the one that I see people kind of get it wrong with loan mortgage insurance. And that's where maybe you're in Sydney or Melbourne, you've you know, owned a property for a while, your home's now worth, say, two million bucks, okay? You don't owe much on it at all, so you've got over a million dollars worth of available um, uh, equity, right? And people then go and say, well, I'm only gonna take a little bit out of the, the, the house and I'm gonna pay loan mortgage insurance. To me, that doesn't make a, a lot of sense, right? Because why, when you've got the equity there, why would you use LMI when it's not going to help you get into property any, any faster, build your portfolio any faster, because you've got the equity. Now, of course, if your rationale is, well, I don't wanna use so much equity out of my house, okay, when you're getting started, then that's more of a, a risk profile scenario, and yes, that, that would make sense. But understand that if you have tons and tons of equity, okay, so if equity isn't your constraint, but borrowing capacity is, okay, then if you're gonna use loan mortgage insurance, be clear that you're using it because you're trying to preserve equity, you don't feel comfortable taking out as much equity out of your home, maybe you've already paid it off and you're not comfortable you know, putting as much debt back on the home to get started, okay? But really understand that it's not giving you a huge financial advantage. Sure, it may be giving you peace of mind, that's totally fine, okay? But again, be clear on why you're doing it, all right? So three scenarios where LMI can be considered, okay? I definitely think for, for like based on my experience and, if, and how I've built my portfolio and how I've helped others do it, even though, yes, you gotta pay that you know, the, the LMI premium, even though some lenders, when they're uh, lending you more than 80% and 90%, they may charge you a higher in interest rate, okay? For me, it's helped me build my portfolio faster, uh, and so if that's your goal, then you would do that. But if you don't need to use LMI, if you've got the equity and the borrowing capacity, okay, then you don't need to worry about it, right? So. I really hope this episode's kind of highlighted some of the things you need to, to con consider. A quick review, your goals, your constraints, is it borrowing capacity, is it equity or, or, or savings, your risk profile, okay? These are things you need to, to consider when making a, a decision. And ultimately though, you need to ask yourself, if you're paying LMI, how quickly can you get that money back through capital growth, okay? And if you don't believe it's gonna happen very, very quickly, not only should you not use LMI, you should not invest in that property or in that area, full stop, okay? That's as black and white as, as, as I can make it, okay? So I really hope this has helped. Please, if you've got any other questions about LMI or loan mortgage insurance, please um, put your questions uh, below. I'll aim to, to answer them as, as best I can, and I wish you all success with your property investing. Hi, it's Nero here again, and thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, and you're looking for a proven recipe, a blueprint on how to build a property portfolio that gives you passive income, then click the link below this video and get a copy of my book, Wake Up Wealthier, How to Build a Property Portfolio that pays you an income each and every month, okay? When you click the link and you download your book, you can get both the digital version and the audio version in case you don't like reading, all right? So I used to sell this book for $49, but right now I'm making it totally free why? Because I want more people to get this information and I know that a segment of you will then like what you see in the book and choose to reach out to find out more about our services. But even if you don't, if you're serious about building a property portfolio that pays your passive income, then you really want to get my book, Wake Up Wealthier. It contains the secrets that I have fine-tuned over the last 19 years. It's totally free for a limited time. Click the link below.